Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm planting a shade loving arrangement. I've got some beautiful stuff. So for those of you who have a lot of shade and you're not sure what to plant, I'm hoping that this gives you a little bit of inspiration. Now I have this urn right here. This is called the Festinata urn from Crescent Garden. I've used these for the last couple of years and I mean, it's a pretty urn. I do plan on changing these out at some point. I've been using these to flank our patio doors kind of underneath our balcony. So I do have two of these. I'm gonna be planting up the same exact way. So I'll only plant one for you today. And then later on, we'll show you the two of them next to the doorway. Um, but it is plastic and I tend to like, you know, concrete things um, and it dries to kind of a like a gray color. Like I just hosed it down. It had a bunch of dust and dirt from being stored in the barn over winter. So it looks nice and glossy, but by the end of this video, you will see what the color looks like. Um, and typically I will use like a satin black spray paint to kind of touch up containers like this. And I could totally do that as well. I just didn't think ahead today. So I'm gonna get my uh, potting soil and fertilizer in the container first. And I've got my potting soil here. Oh. <laughs> Don't look directly in the pot when you pour it in. I think I would know better. All right, that part bag didn't quite do it. Oh, I've got a bigger root ball I'm dealing with. Hold on, I gotta remove some of this soil. Usually when I'm planting just four inch annuals, which is typically what I'm putting in containers, I fill it quite full so that I don't have to add extra soil. But I've got a larger root ball for my centerpiece in today's arrangement, so I need to make room for that. Now I'm going to add a, just a little bit of starter fertilizer. It's just a slow release fertilizer. We'll mix that in to this soil in here. And it doesn't have to mix all the way to the bottom, just in the first layers here. Kind of starting to sprinkle a little bit. So when we did the tour of my parents' garden center, I showed you a number of things that were beautiful. And among those things were a couple of large ferns that were in the shade house that I promptly went back and picked up because I knew there was two that matched. And I thought, oh, they're the perfect size and they're gonna look gorgeous underneath our balcony area because they'll bring some impact. And that's what this is right here. So this is a European ostrich fern. They're a zone three through seven. That makes me really excited because you could winter them over in a container like this. Of course, the foliage will die back, but they would winter over, I mean, in a zone five, six, which is what we are. I mean, being a zone three, that's extra winter hardy. Um, and typically the rule of thumb is if you want to winter something over in a container, you choose something that's rated two zones colder than your current growing zone. So this falls within that category and it grows like anywhere from two to five feet tall or three to five feet tall and a two foot spread. So I can pop this out in the landscape and have this glorious statement fern, which makes me super excited. So let me get this out of the container. I'm going to try to be gentle. I don't know how rooted in it is. Not that rooted in. <laughs> I'm just gonna rough up its root ball just a little bit. You can see another little baby forming right here. It does say on the tag, I don't know a whole lot about this variety, but it says that it spreads, but very slowly. Because I think in the end, you could use this variety for erosion control and, and such. Hold on, I gotta find the good side of this fern. There's always a back to every plant. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Gosh. You could just have just the fern, that's all it takes. Shade combination done. But that is not how we do things around here. Okay, now I'm going to backfill with soil. I need to add a little bit more. Okay, the first plant I'm going to use is our big pop of color. This is called Rockapulco Orange uh impatient which i typically don't have super great luck with impatience but i keep trying um so we're going to try them in this container and see how they do i've got some other impatience i already planted in the ground this year and they're looking good so far uh, so everybody keep your fingers crossed for me these grow like 10 to 20 inches tall and they bloom all season long i kind of want it to be fairly fairly front and center can make a hole there just kind of like that oh isn't that beautiful okay and then right next door we are going to put a wicked hot coleus which i grew these last year both in sun and shade and it seemed to me like um, if you have this color blaze coleus in the sun it grows to be huge if you have it in the shade it's still a big plant but it doesn't get quite as enormous um, but coleus are very easy to size control um, so it's just something you have to go in and every once in a while pop some of those tall branches off but honestly like 
this is such a nice big centerpiece that, I mean, I think that it will hold its own to this coleus. Oh, I like that combination of color though. Isn't that so pretty? Although I do think we need an ivy coming out right here. Let's do that. We've got glacier ivy. Let's see, which one is the most traily? Save the good ones for the front. And ivy does really well in containers as a spiller. Let's tuck that in right there. Oh, that looks pretty. You can slightly tip the root ball. So when you go in, instead of planting it straight down in the soil like this, you can tip it slightly like this to where it forces the foliage to kind of spill over right from the beginning. And your soil that you pack in around the root ball will still be up above it. You just need a tiny bit more room for it to go back instead of, you know, when you're doing straight up and down. But that's typically how we get like our flowers to show so well right from the gate. So I'm just gonna continue planting kind of like in this pattern all the way around the container. And then we'll take a look at it when it's done. look so beautiful I mean right from the beginning I love it when containers do that when they look so pretty like this um, now in shade containers like I mentioned with the coleus I don't expect as much growth out of any of my shade arrangements as I do out of my full sun arrangements because the plants just don't perform like full sun plants do they're just different um, which makes them easier to pack full like this and know that you'll be okay throughout the rest of the season in terms of maintenance the only thing is possibly cutting back the coleus if it gets a little bit either leggy or I haven't experienced that with this variety, but if it gets a little bit long or whatever, you can kind of pop back those stems. You might have to trim the ivy, maybe. Um, the first season I typically don't have to, but I usually winter these over. So honestly, you guys, if I wanted to keep this arrangement for next year, I would still have the fern and the ivy left. And all I would have to do is replace the outer, like the annual plants, the coleus and the impatience, and I could try something else if I wanted to. Like if I fail miserably at growing impatience again this year, um, I could try something different, which is really fun to be able to, and satisfying, to be able to pop a container out from last year and still use what's in there. Uh, and usually from year to year, the things just look even more glorious because they're more rooted in and more established and they'll grow a little bit bigger. So anyway, that's it for this video. So I do need to do some cleanup around where this area is gonna go or this container rather is going to go and then I'll plant up the second one to, I, to be identical to this one. And then we'll show you what it looks like uh, at some point this season, if not at the end of this video, I'm not sure how it's gonna work out. But um, the other thing too I was gonna mention is that instead of, even though I am putting these up against a wall by a door. I did not back my centerpiece up. Like I have plants all the way around it because I found, I've done that several times. I've backed the centerpiece up, but I found that you can really see these containers from all angles because we walk that whole area. And I really like to see a little bit of pretty tucked in right behind the centerpiece. It works in this area. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.